Good morning and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My voice does not always sound quite like this, but we're working with what we got today. I've been doing a little extra teaching this week at the studio, so it's just a little bit compromised, if you know what I mean. But today is kind of just a get my life together day. And I also wanted to chat with you guys about something I've been getting questions about which is how I started intuitive eating after going through a phase of disordered eating. So I thought we could kind of merge the two into a little video because you guys have been telling me you've really been liking these vlog styles that still have like information sprinkled in. And I really need to get my life together. I woke up today absolutely freaking starving, which is funny because yesterday I ate so much food, not saying that's a bad thing, I literally just was starving. And so I think a lot of the time, this is something that's perfect to talk about actually segueing into an intuitive eating talk, is just a lot of the time we expect that basically what we can do is like, every day has to be the same or if we eat a lot one day we have to eat less the next day or if we work out that day it means that we have to eat more we should be more hungry or if we don't work out we should be less hungry but to be honest our bodies don't work like that and that's kind of what intuitive eating teaches us and so even though i ate so much yesterday it doesn't matter it doesn't affect how i should eat today it just means that i listen to my hunger again today like every day is a new and fresh start and so if I wake up hungry, I eat right away. And there was a time in my life where I really struggled with that. And that was actually one of the things that really kept as a theme throughout my disordered eating recovery that I really wanted to be able to control breakfast, either doing like, uh, just, I don't even want to say the things that I would try to think to do because I don't want them to be triggering to anybody. But anyways, I would just try to find ways to control that meal. And I've just come to terms with doing what works for me. So, including that note, doing what works for me now is so different than what I thought it would be. Otis! That's my cat. Otis! Let's just chat about it at breakfast. <laughs> to show you guys the situation I literally have two plates one because I put it on there and one because I decided I need to take a picture and now I'm just sitting here with the two plates <laughs> oh my gosh and they both have bites out of them because I wanted a bite picture but I also just wanted a bite so I test took the less ugly no the less pretty toast and I already took a bite but then I took a bite of the pretty toast for a picture anyways so 
in the past I was obsessed with being healthy that's that's what I personally went through and there's a lot of talk out there about how to be the healthiest to be the most full you know you should have a carb a protein and a fat balance at every single meal and this is not wrong okay I mean I went through my schooling I know that that typically does make us most full but that doesn't always mean that everybody needs to do that especially not for every meal so I always used to obsess over having this perfectly balanced breakfast with all the right aspects and since the studio opened and even when I was in my dietetic internship I wasn't doing that but also since the studio opened literally all that's been sounding good to me in the morning um, is toast pretty much and the thing is is I teach starting at 7 a.m. So it's 7.30 a.m. so I have to get there early. So I want to eat before and I don't want to eat after because I won't be home until like 10.30. And I've tried that before just because I literally was in a rush and I didn't have time. And I was just too hungry. Like it wasn't a good fit. And all I've been having are like these little toasts and they've been working perfectly. And I think that is intuitive eating. Knowing that no matter what anybody else says, if there's something that truly works well for your body and makes you feel good, that is perfect like that is all you need to do so this morning I really juiced it up though and I just got this clean and co pumpkin spice in the mail if you haven't tried this I don't know what you're doing they are launching these again but they have all different flavors and I'm obsessed with every single one of them and then I put the butter on it major key literally such a major key put the butter on first then the nut butter or the granola butter then your fruit mm. And then that little bit of maple syrup or honey. Maybe some hemp seeds. And the thing is, even this breakfast does have all balanced aspects. It's just maybe not as balanced as some people would say you need. But who cares? Almost every food you're going to eat has a little bit of protein, a little bit of carbs, a little bit of fat. That's just the truth. Done with breakfast, but I can never not have a few spoonfuls of this Queen & Co. It's just so good. First, let's tackle the kitchen. Let's see, you're cramping my style. I don't think so. I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Feel free to stop me if anything okay. comes to mind. Uh, so Cute angle. <laughs> I can't extend my arm. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. There we go. I always have way too many beverages and things in my hand. And as you can tell, I'm speed walking because when am I not cutting things down to the wire? But this is going to be really fun because I'm going to work out with one of the other trainers named Nicole. You guys know Nicole. You know, she's my bestie, especially if you follow me on Instagram. Um, 
Chanel's Fit Kitchen and she's at Nicole M. Rauch. Um, basically, all the classes for our studio have been full, which is absolutely amazing, but for the trainers, we still like doing the classes too. And so, hi. Um, basically, we'll go through in the like off times to go and get in a workout so that we can actually still do it. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm running to. Basically, we're gonna do it and you just run the TV screens instead of like doing it when the class time is scheduled. And it's really fun to do it with someone, so we're gonna do it together. I thought about going and seeing, like being on standby for the early morning class, but it was really good to sleep in today and everything, so yeah. Khalifa Kush out of space, Voltron. <laughs> wow. Pronounce the ball means like ball mines. The ladies like my eyes and my jaw lines. I cannot complain, it's got a Mac and like they're all mine. Uh, top floors, skylines. Uh, falling hard like the prime times. Uh, hustlers, yeah, we bonafide. If I shoot shots, I'ma send across the goal lines. Sticky your fingers when we the Mick Jagger. Tiptoeing in Jordans, I had to riff that from speaking of rap. His name is all on the tag, my shorty's all in the past. I'm pretty sure that she's pissed at him. And the flow sicker than the alt right. Illy than Chipotle when they serving up a cold light. I run shit, parliament, no coke lines. The way I spit fire, you to think I was a coal mine. But we going green, with the exception of sparking L standing on my key. Rapper stuck in the side just to avoid the heat. I make more than you make in a year, quarterly. I'm too pretty for cuffing, they stay cold. Got a little sweat stain action. <laughs> but I just went and finished that workout with Nicole. It was so fun doing it together. She is just the best. It always puts me in such a good mood. And I'm going out to eat with a friend that just moved into town. She literally lives so close to us now. So I'm so excited. Her name is Emily. I've talked about her about a billion times. She's Emily Feichels on Instagram. Let's start with her podcast. I'll link it down below. And yeah, we're going to welcome him he her here, me and Brian, because he gets off work early. But I'm still a little bit hungry, even though we're going literally at 2, so we'll probably eat in like 40 minutes. I'm a little bit hungry, so I'm going to eat. Uh, that used to be something that was so hard for me. And so when I started intuitive eating, which is kind of what we're talking about today, that was one of the biggest things that I had to fight through was this idea of like, structured meal times and only eating for a certain amount of what you think you should eat in a day or for a certain amount of hours and the thing about intuitive eating is when what i would always think about is okay if i just eat this now if i just eat when i'm hungry if i just eat what i want later on i'm not going to have this insatiable hunger or this like unbalanced fullness or whatever it is because i just ate what i wanted to in the moment and that's what i always reminded myself in intuitive eating if you're hungry you eat and it's really that simple and it doesn't have to be especially at first knowing the difference between real hunger or emotional hunger or whatever it is all of those things serve different purposes I'm not saying that all the time it has to be like this but getting in tune to our body takes the listening to those cues no matter what they are and why they're happening and then slowly over time you start to dissect them and understand them a little bit better so I just got sense this new protein called Momentus, and I'm really excited about it because, I don't know if you all know, but I have a really big background in sports nutrition. Well, you would if you watched my last video that kind of broke down the dietetic internship and all that stuff. But, so something uh, that people don't always know in the industry is that supplements are not tested. So basically, I could decide I wanna make a supplement, and I could literally put, like, Let's just be extreme. I could literally put like either powder with like freaking laces of steroids or whatever I wanted into a supplement or into a protein powder and I could call it good and freaking sell it. No joke. And I know that's scary, but I think it's important that we know that. And so NSF is a basically separate credentialing body that credentialing, that's not the right word, separate company or a separate organization that basically will put your protein powder or whatever supplement through more rigorous testing. And for athletes, since they get drug tested, they have to have something of this standard, otherwise it can show up on a drug test. And it still could, I mean, there's still always a risk, but this is like a way, way better way to know it. So, this protein is actually NSF certified, and it's plant-based, vegan, non-GMO, gluten-free, really great ingredients. 
And so I'm really excited because I had it yesterday and it's like not chalky, which I really, really don't like when protein powders are chalky either. So I'm loving it so far and I don't have a lot of protein powders in my diet. I actually really just took them out completely for a while, but it is a good option for something like this. And I had a question actually on my Instagram because I asked if anybody had questions um, when I was chatting about my stories. So definitely... If you ever want to like be in on a question or anything, go follow me there. I already said that. Sorry, that's annoying. Um, but they were asking about how to eat intuitively and also get enough protein. I feel like my body always kind of tells me when I need protein when I don't. But if you typically find yourself having a really strong aversion to it, just remember that there's lots of things that have protein. Plant-based stuff has protein, tofu, garbanzo beans, beans, even like little things like rice. All of that stuff has protein in it. So most of the time you're honestly getting enough, but if you're really, really worried about it and you just cannot stand meat, you can't stand eggs, you can't do any of that stuff, there is always option of doing a plant-based protein. It's not something I'd recommend right away, but just something you can think about. I can't find my little topper thing. There it is. We pushed it back when we were doing the toaster this morning. So I'm gonna whip this up. I just did a little bit of ice, half a banana. I may put a little sprinkle of cinnamon in there, which fun fact. Cinnamon actually helps to stabilize your blood sugar if you have something with it. Isn't that cool? Anyways, so I'm gonna have this, drink it up, and then get ready to go pick up Emily. Yeah, it's seriously so good. So we just got back from lunch and then we went and got and I love bento picnic because it's always just so like filling in the best I keep burping <laughs> best way now we're gonna take the puppies for a little walk so I'm excited about that sorry I keep awkwardly itching my face why would you guys want to watch that um, and it's so interesting because I feel like in the past, I would have had so much stress about eating later and then even like getting something sweeter, like a coffee or whatever. I used to be so stressed about even getting a latte or about every ingredient in the milk and all of that craziness. And it's so cool now because I'm not sitting here thinking, oh wait, well, it's four right now and we're going an hour walk and then it's gonna be five. Do I need to eat dinner then, blah, 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 blah. And it's, the cool thing about intuitive eating is also once you get to a certain point, like once you start eating intuitively, you also start to not think about food as much. So in the beginning you do because it's like you're still thinking about the food the same amount, but towards the end you kind of just start to be at peace with food and when you're in good conversation, when you're doing other things, the thing you're, you're not always thinking right about, oh my gosh, when is my next meal, blah, 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 blah. So that's a really cool benefit that I've always found from intuitive eating is now it's just so freeing to not think about food as much. Like I can go and enjoy a situation without pondering and thinking about when my next meal is going to be. And I think that's hard at first, but it continually just practicing it, just not stressing and also like being okay sometimes with just having moments where you don't know exactly what's gonna happen is the beauty in it, you know? You already know, I'm literally addicted to these crackers right now. And then, this is grandma's hummus, but I accidentally, look at that. It's just the best hummus out there. I actually dropped the container on the ground. So I had to put it in Tupperware. But Brian and I are making a sun basket. What a shock. I think we're gonna get, what do you think? Are we gonna get some ciders? Yeah. I kind of want wild basin though. 
I'm getting you cider, but I think I don't want Brian never wants to have the same thing as me, which is rude. Brian. I like to. Well, also, I like different drinks than you. Going it's box. not a bad thing to eat snacks before dinner. If you're hungry, have a snack. Well, thank you, Milo. All right, I'm gonna go though. Make it some basket, and we'll be back soon. What you got? Wild basin in my Mr. Otis drink buddy. Mm -hmm. Shout out, sponsor me. Oh my gosh! And then I have a cider. Do you want to show them which one it is? Well. I, yes. There's Milo's on this one. Uh, this is the uh, Fairweather Cider Co. Floaties. I like it. There's a horse floating down a river. I love their cans. Honestly, when I, I'm not saying, and I've said this before, that drinking should be a yes or a no. Um, I feel like we really try to make it very balanced. We don't almost ever drink during the week and also we don't use that as an excuse to binge drink on the weekends so i'm not going to say we're perfect i'm not going to say we've never done that but now that i've really tried to find more balance in my life with it there was a time where i took alcohol out and it was like for the wrong reasons and i've said this before in another vlog so i don't want to be a broken record but not that it's like wrong reasons ever like you should not have to justify but basically i just feel like i restricted and restricted instead of having more balance and like being able to go out and have a drink with friends if it sounds good but if it doesn't not and honestly there's so many ways that you cannot do it have a sparkling water with some lime in it and people will think it's like a vodka soda or whatever or have like a drink like that and get a non-alcoholic one like brian and i sometimes will get those just because we want the taste of it but we don't want to actually have alcohol so honestly being intuitive about your alcohol is just as important but it does make it harder because sometimes once you start drinking your intuition i feel like goes and also al alcohol like drinking can definitely lead to the path of binging so just like being mindful about it i think is so important and it's helped me so much but it's so fun to like just have a drink and cook dinner and it just feels really nice on a friday night Okay, so I got overly excited about dinner. Brian, stop doing this. And I literally forgot to film it because we were just so excited to eat. But I did get a little Instagram story pic. Insert here. Insert here. And now we're doing dessert. And dessert used to be such a big thing for me. Like it used to be this like weird protein cake that I used to eat and then I would have so much like wrapped up in eating dessert and now it's literally just a part of our daily lives maybe too much sometimes you know what but that's okay like who really defines what's too much our body technically so it's about to die but what you do not a new ice cream heat up sweet orange cookie in the bottom for 30 seconds add not a new ice cream make your own sundae it's amazing Drink number two, and a little bit of work. Candles going on. Okay, so as you may have guessed, it's actually Sunday. I ended up finishing, not finishing that vlog that night, and finishing it up today. But I wanted to finish it up today because I thought it would be perfect to show you guys that this morning we are having biscuits. And as you guys know, a lot of the time I avoid gluten and I avoid dairy just because I've had issues with them in the past. They don't always make you feel good, but I've been working to implement them back in. And I think it's really important that if there's something that you want to have flexibility with, something that you crave, you have the ability in your diet to be flexible. So we're having biscuits. I'm so excited. And I think that this shows kind of intuitive eating, how it can start and finish. Like maybe different ways in your healing journey you have to take foods out or cut foods again or try foods out or whatever it is 
camera died. So we're finishing on the phone, but we will finish this outro. <laughs> but what I was trying to say is basically your body is always changing. It's always going to be telling you something different if you're eating intuitively and that's the beauty of it. So maybe for a little bit, you listen to your body and you have to take out gluten. Have to is the wrong word, but you know, maybe you take it out or maybe you don't, or maybe you have to take it out for a little bit and then you put it back in like I am. I didn't explain this perfectly, but I feel like you get what I'm saying. Essentially that we're always moving with the ebbs and the flows of our body and that's the beauty of intuitive eating is it tells you what you need. And even though it can be hard to learn, just starting, just trying to trust yourself, which is the bigger picture of all of this, and soon it will start to fall into place. But I really had so much fun filming this video. It was one of my favorite videos in a long time because I literally felt like, I don't know, just like we were hanging out and I just feel lucky that I get to do this and come and talk to you guys every week. And so if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. It really, really supports my channel. And definitely hit that subscribe button if you wanna stick around here, say any new videos or see more from me. And if you have any video ideas that you want me to do, definitely comment them down below. I would love to know what you guys would like to see. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.